Welcome back to the third part of the video. This is all about the specific nuts and bolts of doing the home energy assessment. What to focus on, what's some of the background technical knowledge that we need to be able to carry this assessment out. Well, firstly, let's go back to scene two, where assessor one is sitting down at the kitchen table with the householder and assessor two is out making observations around the house. Let's look at the conversation that Assessor 1 needs to have in the beginning. You'll remember that we compared two pie charts, one pie chart in the State Government brochure and another pie chart in the Home Energy Assessment Tool, one focusing on greenhouse emissions and one focusing on overall energy use. And we know, and we don't need to go into the detail behind this, that anything that's plugged into electricity accounts for far more greenhouse emissions. And that is a conversation early on that you need to have before you get into the home energy assessment tool. So let's have a look at some of the background to that. The first thing to remind them of is that anything plugged into an electric electrical socket is connected to coal in Victoria and that's high increased gas emissions. It's important to point out that natural gas is actually better for the environment than electricity. And I'm not sure of the exact ratio, but let's say it's around about four to one. That for the same energy output, electricity emits about four times more greenhouse emissions than does natural gas. But that's not the same for bottled gas, but we won't go into that now. Okay, let's look at scene two for assessor number two. You'll be systematically working through the home energy assessment plan. And of course, you'll be beginning with the section on winter heating and summer cooling over the page. So let's focus on a little bit of background that might help you in going around the home and observing and noticing stuff. The first thing to think about is this diagram here. Where does heat escape and enter a home? Particularly with winter coming up, this is an important one. 25 to 35 percent of the heat goes through the ceiling. 10 to 20 percent from windows 15 to 25% through drafts and gaps in windows and doors, 10 to 20 through the floor, and 15 to 25 through the walls. All of the figures and stuff and details not that important, but what's most important is where most people can change. And the easiest spot for most people is in the ceiling. In Castle Main, with the extremes of temperatures, ceiling insulation is critical. And in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, making people feel more comfortable and reducing their overall cost, this is the no-brainer. It's also the easiest one to do. The next most important ones would be window coverings for windows and ceiling drafts and gaps around external windows and doors. Walls are nigh on impossible for people. There's only a handful of people who have bothered and floors are difficult as well, although probably slightly easier than walls if there's good access under the house. So in summary here, ceiling insulation, window coverings or double glazing for some people and draft ceiling are the critical things to look for. The other th questions that often pop up are around home heating systems and remembering you're not the expert. So with home heating systems, if they've got an open fire, you can safely recommend a slow combustion heater. Portable electric heaters are a no-no to use for more than a couple of hours a day and if possible eliminate their use altogether maybe with the exception of bathrooms for very short periods. Remember that gas is better than electric, so if they've got an electric heater, unless it's a reverse cycle that's a really high star rated product, your gas heating systems are going to be better than electric ones. And remember, they can zone their house to reduce the amount of space they need to heat. This is about as much detail as you can go into about specific home heating systems when you're in the assessment. Let's look at insulation, the two types. The first type here is bulk insulation. And in the bulk insulation there is air. And air is the best resistance to heat, heat transfer and heat loss. So in the ceilings, bulk insulation of at least 3.5 is the minimum requirement for the Castle Main climate. And again, this will make a huge difference. It's not your job to get up into the roof space and tell them how much they've got. That's something in their action plan they might have to identify as an action for themselves to do. The other type of insulation is the reflective foil or sarking and that reflects radiant heat and that can sometimes be used in ceilings in conjunction with bulk insulation 
and there are some window covering products you can get now to do this on the inside of windows. So they're the two types of insulation that are important to know about. Sealing up drafts and gaps is a critical action for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when we go back to our table here, we know that 15 to 25 percent of heat loss happens through drafts. But another thing occurs with drafts in that it creates air movement. And air movement, movement in the house in the winter, particularly at our feet, is a no-no. What it often relates, results in is householders needing to increase the amount of heat they put into their house to compensate for the drafts that are flowing around the home. So this is a critical area and it's a no-cost action and something they can do themselves. Let's look at doors. The critical thing for you to observe in doors is the gaps around the door frame when the door is shut. If you can see light through the doors, it needs to be sealed. And the bottom of doors is also critical. Remind the householder though that if they're going to seal around the outside of their doors to check the latch, to check to see when they put the strip in here that the door will actually shut. Otherwise they could have a whole bunch of doors they can't shut anymore. And in terms of the type of insulation or the type of draft sealing product for the bottom of the doors, again it's up to them to do the research and go to Tonks or Home Hardware or somewhere similar and do their own research. Every door is different and they need different types of seals. Windows, particularly these double hung ones, are a little bit trickier and sometimes it's again just up to the householder to see where the gap is and try and find a product that's best for their needs. Again, point them in the direction of the hardware stores in Castlemaine. Windows. If you're in a house and you're seeing huge, vast amounts of window space, this is a real weak spot in winter and correspondingly in summer. Double glazing is an option for some people, but only few. And if people want to go down the path of window coverings, they've got to remember that they need to create a still air gap between the fabric of the curtain and the window pane. Again, if there's a gap at the top and the sides and the bottom, all you're going to be doing is getting heat loss and circulation around the window like this. So they need pelmets, they need thick heavy drapes, and they need it to touch the floor or the ledge of the window frame at the bottom and preferably be tight against the window reveal at the sides. Then you'll get a good barrier to heat loss in the winter and it will also help in summer. Moving on to summer, if this is a house and that's north, generally east and west windows we recommend vertical shading either through um, planting outside of the window or a pull down shutter of some sort of type or blind on the outside. To the north it's best to go with horizontal shading if possible and that might mean a pergola with shade cloth on it or something like that. But in the height of summer the northern windows are not as much of a problem as they are in the east and west when the sun is very hot in the morning and in the afternoon. So that's a critical point on window shading. 